Good morning, Essex. Good morning. We are so glad that you are here today for a very uh, special day of worship. Um, my name is Dave Stampaw. I am the pastor here, and it is great to be with you all today. Uh, whether you are on site, whether you are with us online via Facebook or YouTube, we are glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. As I said, it's a very special day. First of all, you might see a lot of folks wearing red today. That's because it's Pentecost 2.0. We decided to stretch Pentecost out a little bit longer because we also are going to be celebrating confirmation today. We have three wonderful young people who will be getting confirmed uh, this morning, and so we are so excited to be able to share uh, this day uh, with them. Uh, if you are a guest with us for perhaps the first time, you'll notice our communion table uh, is set as well. And it's very important for you to know uh, at the beginning of our service that you are welcome to participate with us uh, during communion. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a member of our denomination. If you have a hunger and a thirst for what the bread and cup offer you this morning, you are welcome to uh, participate. And we'll have a few more words of instruction uh, at the time of communion. Uh, we hope you'll stick around for a little coffee and cake uh, on the first Sunday. We like to celebrate uh, June birthdays. And we're going to also celebrate our confirmands as well. We're going to be in the parlor, which is the room just over your left shoulder. We have uh, a welcome to worship book. If you would like to let us know you were here today, you can sign up for an email. You can sign up for uh, updates to get information from our church. You can also always do that on our website, which is essexucc.org. We have a number of announcements. Just quickly look there. I'm not going to go over all of them. But in the announcements, you will see uh, a number of save the date opportunities for upcoming uh, uh, opportunities for fellowship, opportunities uh, for ministry uh, as well, opportunities to just hang out and be a church. I know Tammy's got a lot on her plate today. Tammy, did you want to say anything about Jersey Boys today or do you want to save that to next week? Uh, well, tickets will be available hopefully by next week. Excellent. So I'll say that. Uh, it's just been a little bit of a scramble getting everything done and getting 100 Playhouse tickets uh, by today. So uh, we will have that by next week. And uh, we hope you all will come and we hope you will uh, sell tickets to a neighbor or a friend. It's a great fellowship opportunity. You're going to see the play anyway, folks. It's fun. We all know that. So just do it through us. And that way the church makes a little money. And uh, we all have a great time. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you for that. Like I said, there's a number of announcements uh, in your bulletin. Take your bulletins home with you this morning. That way you can put this right on your fridge. You can have it somewhere uh, to remember all of the dates that are coming up, all the different ways uh, you can be involved uh, in the life of the church. At this point, I'd like to invite Brooke Karch to come forward and offer our call to worship. Brooke is one of our confirmands. Our confirmands will be participating in the service uh, this morning. This call to worship is based on Romans uh, verses uh, 26 and 27 from chapter 8. Go ahead. We are gathered together in the presence of God to offer our praise and our prayers. We come with confidence, knowing that even when we can't find the words, God's Spirit is right here with us, praying in us and for us. So we come with joy to worship to God, who knows and loves us all. Thank you, Brooke. Our opening hymn this morning is number 43 in your black hymnal, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's rise together in body or spirit as we sing this morning.
before you sit down, let me invite you to turn to those around you and greet them this morning with the peace of Christ as I invite our confirmants to come forward for confirmation. said this is a great day uh, in the life of any church Um, it's a great day uh, in the life of a pastor uh, to be able to celebrate a day like today Uh, but especially it's a great day for our young people uh, who have spent uh, the last few months uh, meeting together as a group and we will uh, give you a little bit of an introduction as to what's going on uh, with that but it's it's important to remember First of all, the choir has a phone call, I think. (laughs) Somebody in the choir have a phone call? Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. This is what's important to remember. It's important to remember that through the sacrament of baptism, um, especially if we are baptized as infants, that our parents take vows for us. They take promises for us as, as children. And what happens is at baptism, we are given new life through water, through the Spirit, uh, and we are initiated into the universal church uh, that has found expression uh, throughout the world at all times and in all places. And after a lot of study, after a lot of prayer, after a lot of discussion and discernment, uh, these confirmands are here with us this morning. In addition, the class was made up of actually seven confirmands, two from the old Saybrook Congregational Church and two from the Westbrook Congregational Church. And we all met together uh, to have a program of confirmation. And these are the three from our church who have chosen to confirm those vows that were taken at their baptism, to be welcomed into the church, to acknowledge what God is doing in and through them. So with that in mind, will you bow your heads with me as we begin our time together in prayer. Good and gracious God, may your Spirit be with these young people as they take their next step in this journey of faith. May they feel the love of their church family as they begin a new chapter in their lives. Give them wisdom, strength, and courage as they continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. Amen. As I mentioned, they have been meeting for the last number of months uh, with seven Uh, a total of seven young people uh, discussing uh, topics related to the faith. God, Jesus, the Bible, faith, church, and service. And so what I'd first like to do uh, with you guys is so you can introduce yourselves a little bit to the congregation and let them get to know you a little better. Tell us a little bit about your favorite part about confirmation. Um, my name's Pip, and my favorite part of the confirmation class is probably how, like, we are all at different parts of our religion, and we st- are still trying to figure out ourselves, and we never judged each other on that. That's great. That's great. Um, hi, my name's Vanessa, and I think my favorite part was getting to learn more about our religion and spending time with new people. Hi, I'm Elena, and my favorite part was the epiphany logs that we journaled in at the end of every class. It was a great time to reflect um, on what we were learning. Excellent. So the epiphany journals were a little notebook that they had. At the end of each class, they could write down something new that they they learned, uh, an epiphany of sorts, if you will. And they had a little light bulb on the cover of the journal, and it was a way for them to track and keep, uh, uh, just keep notes. Uh, throughout, their, uh, throughout their time together in class. Anything else you want to talk about? I know you guys did a faith project. Is there anything you remember in particular about your faith project that you'd like to share? We did a six-word memoir, and you would write how you were feeling about the religion at the end of the class, and I know I said, under any circumstance, love never dies. So right. it was just relatable for me because I get to 
even if I'm not feeling the best about God, I still know he's right there with me and he's there to support me. That's great. My six word memoir was live, laugh, love, self, family, all. And it's just to tell everyone you should love everybody and yourself. Um, my six word memoir, I believe, was <laughs> um, I promise to love God and my church, um, or and church. Um, and this was, um, I think, pretty much the point of the class was to confirm your religion and confirm your faith to God. And so my six word memoir pretty much does that. That's great. Thank you, guys. One of the things they learned uh, as well during confirmation, and I love what you said, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure what it was, or what it was then, uh, is that faith is a journey. And we are all on a journey, and their faith now will be very different as you grow and learn more and study more. So even this church has not a six-word memoir, but a, maybe a six-paragraph memoir. We have a faith project of our own that's found in our covenant in our vision statement and mission statement and uh, purpose statement of our church. And so what I've done is I've selected a few highlights for us to read. We're not going to read the entire thing. Choir, this is your cue to get your pages ready because they can't see the TV. Um, but what I'd love to do is uh, read these together and affirm our faith together uh, that we have here at Essex Congregational Church. Would you read with me? This church acknowledges Jesus Christ as Lord and finds in the scriptures interpreted through reason, faith, and conscience, guidance in matters of faith and life. Each member shall have the undisturbed right to follow the word of God according to their own conscience under the enlightenment of the spirit. Our mission as a church is to worship God, proclaim the good news, and labor together for the progress of knowledge, the promotion of justice, the reign of peace, and the realization of human unity. We are united in our purpose to walk in the ways of the Lord as we offer loving service to all people and work and pray for the transformation of the world into the kingdom of God. And while that was part of our church covenant, I think you heard those ideals reflected in what you share. And I know, uh, along with the other leaders of confirmation, we saw them reflected uh, in your lives as well. And so it is with great honor that I ask you just a few questions. Are you here this morning to affirm the promises that were made at your baptism? and follow Jesus as the foundation of your life? If so, answer, I am. I am. And will you strive to live out Jesus' great commandment, to love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself? If so, answer, I will. I will. And will you participate in the life and work of our church and the church universal by sharing your gifts as together we serve this community and the world? If so, answer, I will. And a final question for the congregation, for all of you who are gathered here today. Will you do all in your power to help support and pray for these young people as they seek to follow Jesus? If so, please answer with a resounding, we will. We will. That was resounding. That's fantastic. You guys ready? It's been a long time. Here we go. Stay right there. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Brooke Louise Karch, on behalf of the Essex Congregational Church, we confirm your journey of faith. May God be with you this day and always, so that as a follower of Jesus, you might always grow in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Vanessa Ray Noble, on behalf of the Essex Congregational Church, we confirm your journey of faith. May God's spirit be with you this day and always, 
so that as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you might grow in faith, hope, and love. Amen. And Elena, Margaret Noble, on behalf of the Essex Congregational Church, we confirm your journey of faith. May God be with you this day and always, so that as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, you might grow in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, may these young people hold firmly to their faith, be strong and courageous, and may their lives be filled, and may they be known for their good thoughts, their good words, and their good deeds. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a very big round of applause for our newest confirmants and members of our church. So what we have for each of them as well is a confirmation certificate as well as a membership certificate because they are now members of the church. We have a wonderful study Bible for you all to have as well. And I've got three candles lit on the table here, but I have a candle lit for each of you to take with you uh, as well as you go on to the next phase of your faith journey. Thank you very much. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Look at that. That's beautiful. Thank you all very much. I can't, I can't tell you all, um, not only the families gathered here and uh, our young confirmands as well, but I can't tell you what a joy it was um, to be with you during this confirmation process. We've got some great kids, folks, just so you know. Um, they were energetic, they were curious, they were enthusiastic. And as I said, it's a, uh, it's a great moment um, for a, a pastor um, to join together uh, with the youth of our church uh, and be here uh, with them. So as we go into a moment of prayer, what I want to do is I want to remember uh, for all of us to keep uh, our confirmants uh, in our prayers, not only our three, but, but all seven of them. This is also a time when we like to uh, share prayer requests. If you have a, a thought or a concern, perhaps a, a, a joy uh, that you'd like to share, uh, we discover every Sunday at this time that life's a mix, right? Life is a mix. There's always some joy. There's always a rose, but there's always a thorn. There's some, usually, uh, a lot of laughter uh, in our days, but oftentimes there are tears as well. So if you have something you'd like to share, we'd love to hear. I'd, I'd like to uh, send a blessing to my sister who is starting her journey in the uh, breast cancer problems. And her name, Marv, is what? Jane. Janine. Ja Jane Hubbard. Jane Hubbard. Thank you, Jane. Anybody in the choir? The choir's good today. I received notice this morning regarding um, a student in our middle school who was in a head-on collision yesterday. She, her sister and her grandmother are in the ICU. She suffered a traumatic brain injury, had surgery last evening. Um, also broke her femur, amongst other injuries. We're not sure of prognosis. Um, so please pray for her and her family. Thanks. Hello, I'm Leslie. I'm all the way from Nebraska. I'm visiting my sister Betsy, and I want to send her a blessing. And we have a special blessing to our her, her husband and my brother-in-law who did pass away, and, and it's why I'm here celebrating him, and I'm so glad to be here. It's, it's a wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll keep you in our prayers. 
I'd just like to say, uh, I couldn't help but look over there when we were saying, we will, because there would be no one who would be more enthusiastic about supporting our young compliments than Celia. Mm. So true, so true. Yes, we just celebrated our 17th anniversary yesterday. See what I mean? It's roses and thorns. It's dark clouds, but there's silver linings. Life is like that, folks. And as we are together as a family, that's when our joys are multiplied and our burdens are shared. So would you bow your heads with me? as we spend a few moments in prayer. Good and gracious God, we are mindful of the chances and changes in life. The news we hear of sickness, disease saddens us and we want to reach out and we want to help and yet oftentimes we simply don't know what to do so we come to you this morning the scriptures say we can cast our cares on you because you care for us and so as we gather as a faith family this morning, that's what we do. We share with you the heaviness of our heart. And yet we also come together at this time to celebrate. We rejoice with our confirmands and give you thanks that they have chosen to take this next step and affirm their baptism in the days ahead be with them in a mighty, powerful way. May they continue to live lives of service to you and others in all that they think, say, and do. And we're mindful of the cares and concerns around us, in our church, in our families, in our community, our nation, and our world. And so we remember the cares and concerns that we have shared this morning. And because you have called us to hold the needs of those around us as dear to us as our own, we now silently remember all those we know and love who seek healing in body, mind, or spirit, and all those who have asked for our prayers this day. Oh God, with your steadfast love as a constant comfort and presence, we pray now together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me thank you right now for your continued and ongoing financial support of our church. It's your generous giving that allows confirmation programs to go forward, uh, feeding programs like the New Haven Food Pantry and the Shoreline Soup Kitchen, as well as our relief efforts of the one great hour of sharing and strengthening the church, which, by the way, you can still contribute to if you'd like, as well as our midwinter meals. There's a QR code in your bulletin uh, if you would like to give electronically this morning. But as the ushers come forward, 
we will now gratefully receive our morning offering. pray. Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts in response to your goodness and grace. May they help us share the good news of your love as we work and pray for the transformation of the world. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Listen to what I say, my child, and remember what I command you. Listen carefully to wisdom and set your mind on understanding. Cry out for wisdom and beg for understanding. Search for it like silver and hunt for it like hidden treasure. Then you will understand respect for the Lord and you will find out how to know God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. 
Be careful, hold firmly to your faith, have courage and be strong, do everything in love. So what I'm going to do for a few minutes this morning is talk to the confirmants. I want you all to listen in because it still works. Okay. It's all good stuff, but I would love to just share a few quick thoughts uh, with them as well as, as all of you know, and as, as some of you may know, we just finished up a sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount uh, from Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And the Sermon on the Mount closes with one of my favorite, favorite Jesus stories, one of my favorite parables that he likes to tell. Jesus said this, he says, anyone who takes these words of mine and puts them into practice, puts them into action, is like a wise person who builds a house on a good foundation. And in a way, confirmation is part of that good foundation. That's the foundation, the, the, the continuing of the building of the house or the building of the life that began with your baptism and continued through your confirmation and, and will continue to continue as you grow and journey in your faith. And part of confirmation, as you know, is that decision to continue building that house, to continue to take Jesus' words and, and, and put them into practice and live out what it means to be a, a follower of Jesus. Now, confirmation, you guys have a great theme for confirmation. You guys have put together six word memoirs for confirmation as well. And I know you didn't really have a theme song per se, but I think this is going to be a good candidate. Now, I can almost guarantee you won't know this song, but your parents will and everybody else in the church probably will. It's from some of my uh, favorite musician theologians, known as Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. <laughs> and the song is called, does anybody know what I'm going to go? Where am I going to go? Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Teach your children. Teach, who, who said that? Ted Bliss gets the award. <laughs> Teach your children well. This is what you need to remember. You who are on the road must have a code that you can live by. And so become yourselves. It's exactly what this journey of faith is all about. Your baptism, your Sunday school, your confirmation it is designed to do all that. Not just for you, but for all of us. But for all of us, that teaching of the faith, that sharing of the faith is, is meant to do just that, helping us to take Jesus' words and put them into practice, put them into action. The six-word memoir that the confirmation chose, the confirmation class chose as their class theme, their class six-word memoir, was a summary of Jesus' great commandment. Love God, love neighbor, love self. And that's what it all comes down to. If we only had six words in our entire Bible, those six would be enough. But we have more than that. The scripture reading that uh, Elena did so wonderfully with this morning is, is part of that code that we can live by. And I actually wanted to choose that scripture reading because that scripture reading was part of my ordination process. My ordination service, which is like confirmation for what I do, basically. Listen carefully to wisdom. Set your mind on understanding. Wisdom 
and understanding. That's good for all of us, right? Search for it like silver, hunt for it like hidden treasure, and you will discover how to know God. That's the journey of our faith. How to know God. But the important thing to remember is that you're not done. Yes, you got a nice little certificate. You got a nice little candle to remember the day. But your journey of faith doesn't end here. It doesn't end here for any of us. Our journey continues. Faith is not a destination, it's a journey. There's a great book called The Stages of Faith, if you've read that book, by an author named Fowler who, who helps us understand what faith is look, looks like. These young men back here have a very different faith, right? At a young age. But one day, I'll bet we'll see them in confirmation class, right? And your faith is very different now than it will be in 10 or 20 years. So the idea that the second part of our reading had of holding on to your faith, even though it will change and grow and develop, have courage, be strong. And I love the last few words of that reading, do everything in love. Boy. There's the goal of our faith too, right? Do everything in love. And here's what's gonna happen. Here's, I can promise you, if you are living by that code and so becoming yourselves, if you're leaning into Jesus' great commandments, another portion of the New Testament tells us that there's a list of characteristics that will start to appear in your life as we let God's spirit into our lives more and more, as we continue to seek after wisdom and set our minds on understanding, building that house on a good foundation, the scripture says our lives will be marked by things like love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, and kindness. And again, that's the journey of faith that we join you on as you go from this place and take these steps. This is a great occasion in your lives today. Sundays are always a great occasion, right? And what do you usually do when you've got a great event or a great occasion? You eat, <laughs> right? You got to have a meal to celebrate any great occasion. Well, we have a meal for you that is amazing. It's not going to fill your stomach. It's not going to help you build muscle. But it's a meal of soul food. It's a little piece of bread and a little sip of juice. Oh, but isn't it much more than that, folks? Jesus calls us to share this bread and, and share this cup in remembrance of him, in memory of all that he did and all that he taught. And so I can think of a no better way to celebrate your first journey, your, the first steps on your journey as you continue your life of faith as we share a communion meal together. If those who are assisting with communion would come forward at this time, I would like to remind everyone once again that if you are a guest with us, you are more than welcome to share this meal with us. If you have a hunger and a thirst for what this bread and cup have to offer you, uh, we hope that you will partake with us and share uh, this meal. There are gluten-free bread options available on the plate 
uh, as it comes to you. And the uh, cup that we use, we call it unfermented wine, <laughs> otherwise known as grape juice. Uh, so everyone is indeed truly welcome uh, to partake of this meal with us. Uh, our tradition here is to pass the bread and invite everyone to hold on to the bread until everyone is served, and then we will partake together. We will do the same with the cup. And this is a meal in remembrance of all Jesus did and taught. And first and foremost, we share this meal together as a reminder that one of the things he taught is that there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. With that in mind, let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, because you are good, your mercy endures forever, and our souls find rest in you alone. May this meal nourish, sustain, and unite us as we do the work you have called us to do. May we be one with you, one with each other, channels of your love in a broken and hurting world, as we remember that it was the night in which Jesus was eating the Passover with his disciples, that he took bread and he gave you thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take this all of you and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. We give you thanks, O oh God, once again for this meal we are about to share. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven, let us partake together. Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us partake together. There is a unison prayer of thanksgiving, which you will find in your bulletin. I invite you to join me as we pray together. We give you thanks, O oh God that you have refreshed us at your table with the presence of your Son and the inspiration of your Spirit. Strengthen our faith in you, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning has a familiar tune, but it might be new words for you. It's a perfect hymn for Confirmation Sunday. Number 350 in your black hymnal, now in the days of youth, we will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's rise together and body your spirit as we close our time together.
may be seated. That's a great Sunday, right? Thank you to all the guests who have come to support our confirmands this morning, family, friends, uh, and loved ones. Hear these words of benediction from our confirmands. May God who is above you watch over you. May God who is beside you comfort you. May God who is behind you pick you up when you fall. And may God who goes before you and is within you guide you in all that you think, say, and do this week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen.